Hey folks, so welcome to another Natalie Sofa. You see I've got uh, more ambient lighting uh, that I'm trying out. More on that on a future video. Um, I should have a surprise to show you. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about, as the title insinuated, the controversial fin simulation dial that debuted, I believe, on the X-T50 camera. And I'll bring a picture of it up here. And I've got some ideas for, for the dial and how it could be future implemented, maybe. Um, and we're going to discuss those tonight. And we're also going to go into a little bit of information about the uh, the XS20 here, which also has a film simulation dial in a way. It doesn't have the same interface that the X-T50 has, though. It's a little bit different. Um, and at the end of the video, we're going to talk about a little a very uh, underused function for JPEG shooters, which is called film stimulation bracketing. So if you watch to the end, uh, we'll talk about that for anybody who's a JPEG shooter who wants to uh, to find out what that's about. And that's supported on most Fujifilm cameras, older ones. And here's my cat to join us and meow. <laughs> right, so uh, without further ado, let us... Uh, move on with my thoughts on the dial. So I'm not a big fan of the film simulation dial, but I think it could be potentially worked into something that is usable. So let me bring up um, again a picture of the dial. And as you can see, it's got the word film in the middle and the film simulations with some custom modes around the outside. And I could see the appeal to it because for those who are coming to the camera for a bit of fun, it very quickly gets the selective film simulation, but equally uh, the custom dial on my Fuji camera there, especially when you're in app program mode or auto mode, can be set to, to select uh, film simulations in a very similar way. But you'll notice that there's a difference between the interface. So I don't have an uh, X-T50. So I can only bring up a still that I found on uh, Fuji's website of the actual, um, what the menu looks like. And you get a much nicer menu, which shows a graphic of the film simulation dial. And it got me thinking, and I don't know if Fuji would ever do this in future cameras or whether they do it in more high-end cameras. And a lot of people don't like this idea because it goes away from analog dials. But imagine the film simulation dial and imagine a little round TFT screen that maybe is even touch screen, maybe not, in there that has a little symbol for the little graphic for the film simulation is turned around. So it's really neat and interactive and doesn't look, I think the word film looks a bit cheesy because you are trying to emulate uh, what cameras did. And although a little TFT never existed, it does put a little vintage picture of a roll of film in there that represents the film stock that they're trying to emulate. And I think that would look really nice on the back of the camera, be really um, ergonomic, for want of a better word, uh, that younger generation who were moving in back into having a camera uh, could really sort of very visually see. Because, you know, if you just sort of see the word N and you're like, what does that mean? Classic negative. It, it's not as obvious what those symbols mean, unless you know. But if you had a little symbol and it's got the little word, you know, classic neg, it's it's enough for you to see what you've actually selected with that little screen. Or it could have a separate screen um, and you've got a thumb wheel that adjusts the dial. Something that's an iteration on from it that's kind of vintage yet with a twist of modern. And I just wonder what people thought of that idea. and. The idea was sort of inspired by, look up a camera if you don't know it already, Fuji fans probably do, the X-Pro3. The way that the screen works on that, the rear screen, is that it flips down, not out like the, um, so a lot of cameras popular today, the screen flips out like that. But on the X-Pro, if you imagine that's the camera, the screen flips down like that. And when you flip it up and it closes, it it closes like a reverse clamshell. I would demonstrate with a camera, but I don't have a camera that does that. And on the back of that screen, 
you've got a little very, very simple TFT that will show a graphic of the selected film. So it's quite a size, about the size of a postage stamp, but a big stamp. And it's a really quick way to see what film simulation you're using. And I think if we could build that into some of the lower end cameras and things like on other models, things like the hybrid viewfinder, I think those are, are what are appealing to the charm of those cameras. And which is why I think, you know, you've got the X, um, XH2S and XH2, which have an OLED display, which is a black and white display. And they have that on the top so you can see what the camera's doing. But imagine if you had a little, little tiny color TFT on the top of the entry lower cameras. They're not expensive to make. I mean, the video I did a few weeks ago, I'll see if I can put a clip in of it. Um, the X3 uh, Godox flash trigger has a touchscreen TFT that's about one inch square. The whole trigger costs £70. And when you think of what it does for £70 with a touchscreen and a TFT, how much would it cost to the camera, maybe 30 quid each per extra per camera, to put like the little cool function on of a little color graphic just that emulates what you used to do because on the back of traditional film cameras you would cut out the cutout on the back of a film box which would be what the film stock was and you would have a receptacle that you slide into on the back of the film camera that's what these were on the x-pro were, were to emulate people were used to not be sure you know if i'm shooting Ilford Ortho 80 and I've forgotten what film I put in the camera. I can't open it to see what the film is. But if I cut out the little plastic cutout on the film box, you used to slide that on and you could see what film stock. Oh, I've cut done the cardboard cutout and that's what film stock I'm using. And I know it's it's not necessary today because you can choose it, but it adds to the nostalgia of what the camera, you know, that's why the X100 has the little vintage ISO dial that Fuji really recently talked about how complex that was to make. But aren't we glad it's on there because it's beautiful and I've got an old Fuji film camera that actually has that very mechanism on the top. You lift it up, you select the film speed, the ASA speed of the film, pop it down and the reason you do that is so the light meter um, deflects the correct amount based on the film speed you've put in the camera. These are all vintage things that actually have vintage aesthetics. So when people say that a little touchscreen on the top of, the, of an XT, an XM1, um, which is the next camera they're coming out, or an XT52, um, is not in keeping with the vintage dials. Well, actually, it kind of is in keeping with the camera because the idea is it's a digital representation of the card, a quick look at the film stock that you've got loaded in the camera. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about moving on, because we talked about the X-T50, which is the camera that has the dial. I want to know your thoughts on the dial as it is, because the X-M1, some more rumors have come out, it's getting the film simulation dial. Looks like it's going to be an entry-level camera, similar to the X-T50, but without a viewfinder. Super little pocket camera, something I would love to have when I'm going running, I would, again, I would, this is still quite a big camera to take when I'm running and it's got IBIS. I kind of hope that the XM1, so XM5, as it's, we think it's going to be called, doesn't have IBIS. So it's a little compact body, maybe not with having this bit here. And you could put a little lens like this Sigma 18 to 50 on it, f2.8, put a little mist filter on it. And boy, have you got a little lovely retro camera where you can just go out and enjoy shooting jpegs in auto mode and again i've did a video a few weeks ago about using auto mode on the x um, s20 definitely worth watching that video because you can get some excellent results by doing that uh, let the camera work out you know i let the camera work out i was shooting a sunset i'll bring the picture up here that i took uh just a sunset scene this is straight out of camera this picture valve here it picked it did the exposure worked everything out and I just put the camera in auto. Now imagine if you're out for a run, you're out for a hike, even if you're a professional photographer, you don't want to mess around with 
set in the exposure. You might want to tweak it with the exposure comp dial. You might want to tweak it with your film simulation dial. And then you've got a camera that's dead easy to use, dead quick to use. Because, you know, I like shooting in manual. But you can sometimes make mistakes in manual, even when you're experienced. And it takes longer to take the shot, whereas if you let the camera do it, they're getting very good now at doing basic shots. Uh, and again, I just wanted to know what you think. Would you buy this camera from the point of view of having something that could take your Fuji lenses, but be just saying it's super compact that you can just put in your pocket, like a ZV-1. Maybe it's got a flip screen. Uh, so that it can be used for self-portraits, selfies, as we like to say. Uh, but just the ultimate sort of little travel camera, because I'm going to do a video in more detail on this, talking about the sort of resurgence and the rebirth of cameras. But I really think cameras are making a comeback. Mobile phones, they're, they're great for taking pictures, but they're soulless. And the quality you can get from a mobile phone picture Whichever way you look at it, you'll get a good picture, but they're not as good as you think. And if you're sort of a little bit more into your photography and you like the tactile side, I think this is what Fuji and other manufacturers are starting to target. So, let's hear your thoughts on that, folks, in the comments below. I promised you a little um, tip right at the end, uh, and it's about the XS20. And it's film simulation bracketing. So, with the XS20, we can actually... Uh, select, um, set one of the dials and select film simulations using that dial. The interface is a bit more basic, but it does show you what's going on when you select that dial. And you can select film simulation and take a picture. But one thing that a lot of Fuji cameras have is film simulation bracketing. And you might have heard of bracketing, and bracketing, when you do things like uh, exposure, might take a dark image, a mid image, and a bright image, so that you can play around with them in post-processing and, you know, get a an image that is more balanced because you've got three exposures to work with. Well, for film simulation bracketing is, you choose three of your favourite film simulations. Can't use custom ones yet, but that would be a nice uh, firmware update. And you set them in the bracketing, as you do here in the menu, uh, once you've turned the bracketing on, you select the drive mode to bracketing. Once you've selected the film simulations you want, and then you take a picture. Just make sure you're in JPEG mode. So you're saving JPEGs out. Otherwise, you'll just get three raw files that have got the, the what they call the metadata applied to them for the film sim, but you wouldn't get the actual film simulation. You can absolutely do this in camera raw processing. But it's a very quick way for you to go, oh, there's a picture I want to take. Do, 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 bang, bang, bang. You don't have to mess around in, in, in the camera or in post. You've got a, one picture taken, but it's three copies, each saved with an individual film simulation. And it's just a quick way of doing it. If you don't want to mess around with the settings in the camera, you might be the kind of person who just likes to shoot a picture, press the button, take a picture in auto, and you just want it to do three variations, a monochrome image, a real ace image and a valve image three very different looks one's quite muted one's vibrant one's monochrome and the film simulation bracketing if you set that up and your camera very easy to set up let you do that you just change in the drive mode to bracketing setting the film simulations up as i've shown earlier and going out and taking a picture and it's a very quick way of giving you that kind of flexibility that i think fuji are trying to add with the film simulation dial. So again, let me know what you think of that idea in the comments below. And I hope you got value from this video. Um, please feel free to disagree with me on the film simulation dial. I'm not a fan of it, but I think it potentially could be developed into something. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Anyway, just a short one today. Um, and we're almost at a thousand subscribers. And I do have a um, an interesting video coming up that I really like your support in watching in the coming weeks. But I can't say anything more at the minute about it. But suffice to say, remember to click the bell for notifications and like the video if you got value from it. 
and then hopefully you won't miss out on upcoming videos. Anyway, folks, I'll see you all later. Bye.